There's something strange happening in laboratories and research facilities around the world right now. Scientists and engineers are building technologies that shouldn't be possible yet. Not in five years, not in 10. Some of these innovations were supposed to arrive around 2040, maybe 2050, except they're already here, functional and operational, quietly reshaping reality while the world remains largely oblivious. The timeline has collapsed. What was considered distant future tech is now being deployed in hospitals, integrated into transportation networks, and tested in homes across multiple continents. And here's the deeply unsettling part. This isn't happening gradually. Multiple breakthrough technologies are maturing simultaneously, creating a convergence that's accelerating faster than anyone predicted. Quantum systems that rewrite the rules of computation, biological printers creating living tissue, digital interfaces that rest directly on human eyeballs, communication networks that cannot be hacked because physics itself prevents interception. These aren't prototypes gathering dust in university basements. They're functional systems moving from experimental to operational at breathtaking speed. The future everyone thought was safely distant. It just arrived early, unannounced, and most people completely missed it. What follows is an exploration of innovations that make 2025 feel borrowed from decades ahead. Some will extend human life, others will collapse geographic distance, and several will force uncomfortable questions about identity, privacy, and what it means to be human when technology stops being external and starts becoming integrated at the cellular level. Because the world just changed fundamentally, most people just haven't realized it yet. Artificial assistants that manage your entire life. Personal assistants in 2025 moved far beyond simple voice commands and weather updates. Amazon introduced Alexa Plus, a generative AI system capable of handling genuinely complex tasks, booking transportation across multiple platforms, remembering entertainment preferences and proactively suggesting content, planning study schedules based on learning patterns and upcoming deadlines. Apple is developing similar upgrades for Siri, though rollout has been delayed until 2026 due to integration challenges. But the shift is already happening. In offices and homes, these assistants are managing calendars with contextual awareness, drafting emails that match personal communication styles, and optimizing energy use based on behavioral patterns and utility pricing. The evolution is clear. Assistants are transforming from basic tools that respond to commands into integrated systems that anticipate needs and handle daily responsibilities with genuine autonomy. The line between helpful tool and invasive presence is blurring rapidly. When AI starts making decisions before being asked, convenience and control become competing values, and that tension is only beginning. Synthetic humans selling real products. Synthetic media has crossed from novelty to mainstream advertising and entertainment. Vodafone recently released a TikTok advertisement featuring an AI-generated presenter. Most viewers didn't realize anything was unusual until subtle glitches, unnatural eye movements, slight lip-sync delays, revealed it wasn't a real person. Digital personalities like Lil Mikella have been partnering with global brands for years, accumulating millions of followers who engage with them as genuine influencers. The market for virtual influencers is projected to surpass $21 billion by 2030, growing at over 25% annually. Healthcare organizations are even testing AI-driven spokespeople for public health campaigns, using synthetic faces and voices that never tire, never age, and never generate scandals. What began as experimental technology is steadily becoming a normalized layer of digital marketing. The uncomfortable question, when synthetic personalities become indistinguishable from real ones, what happens to authenticity? When audiences can't tell the difference, does the difference matter? The answers aren't clear, but the technology isn't waiting for consensus. Immersive reality that doesn't feel like a gimmick? Virtual and augmented reality in 2025 finally shed the experimental novelty label. Giants like Snap, Unity, and Xreal are betting heavily on hardware and platforms that deliver genuinely useful experiences rather than impressive demonstrations. Broadcasters are already experimenting with AR-slash-VR-powered news studios, where viewers see holograms and interactive data used in live broadcasts. The future isn't approaching, it's already on screen, integrated into daily content consumption. But it's not just media entertainment. Training simulations are replacing expensive physical practice in aviation, surgery, and emergency response. Remote collaboration tools are creating virtual spaces where distributed teams interact with spatial awareness and body language. Classrooms are being transformed through immersive environments that make abstract concepts tangible and manipulable. What once felt like niche entertainment for gaming enthusiasts 
is crossing into everyday professional and educational life. The technology finally matured past the awkwardness, latency, and limited use cases that plagued earlier generations, and once that threshold gets crossed, adoption accelerates exponentially. Computing that uses everything simultaneously? Hybrid computing, in 2025, evolved beyond choosing between cloud or edge processing. It's about orchestrating all of it together. Public clouds, private clouds, local edge devices, advanced processors, and even early quantum nodes layered into seamless systems that route data wherever it's most efficient. Companies are balancing speed, cost, and security like conductors directing complex orchestras, with each computational resource playing its specialized role. Microsoft announced quantum-ready models designed specifically for hybrid applications, anticipating a future where quantum processors handle specific problem types, while classical systems manage everything else. Industries from healthcare to manufacturing are testing real-time optimization powered by these multi-layered compute meshes. The shift represents computing's evolution from centralized mainframes to distributed clouds to something more sophisticated, adaptive networks that dynamically allocate processing based on task requirements, available resources, and real-time conditions. It's not revolutionary in the flashy sense, but it's fundamentally changing how computational infrastructure operates behind every app, website, and service people use daily. Organizations running simulations of themselves. Here's something less flashy but quietly powerful. Companies are now simulating their entire operations digitally. Every process, every supply chain flow, every potential bottleneck in virtual mirrors known as digital twins of organizations. Siemens, Microsoft, and Accenture are leveraging these DTOs to optimize performance, predict equipment failures before they happen, and test scenarios in virtual space before implementing changes in reality. This is industrial foresight in action, allowing businesses to model complex systems with unprecedented accuracy and make decisions based on simulated outcomes rather than educated guesses. The technology isn't new conceptually. Engineers have used simulation for decades, but the scale, fidelity, and real-time integration with actual operations represent a qualitative leap. Organizations can now run hundreds of simulations testing different strategies, identifying vulnerabilities, and optimizing workflows without risking actual disruption. It's transforming how large-scale operations get managed, shifting from reactive problem-solving to proactive optimization. And it's happening entirely behind the scenes, invisible to consumers, but reshaping how goods get manufactured, distributed, and delivered. Infrastructure that thinks before you do, Digital twins aren't just for organizations anymore. Entire cities are being modeled virtually. Urban planners use these simulations to test traffic flow changes, evaluate infrastructure upgrades, and predict how new construction affects existing systems. Singapore has created perhaps the most comprehensive urban digital twin, modeling everything from pedestrian movement to energy consumption across the entire city-state. These virtual cities allow testing policies and interventions before implementing them physically, Want to know how closing a major street for construction affects traffic patterns across the entire metropolitan area? Run the simulation. Considering new zoning laws, model the long-term effects on housing prices, traffic, and public services. The technology transforms urban governance from reactive management to predictive planning, and it's not limited to massive cities with enormous budgets. Mid-sized municipalities are beginning to adopt scaled-down versions using digital twins to optimize public transportation routes plan emergency response strategies, and manage utility infrastructure more efficiently. The concept is simple. Create a virtual copy of physical reality, accurate enough to predict how changes ripple through complex systems. The execution is transforming how humans design and manage the spaces where billions of people live. The tubes that could replace airplanes. Hyperloop technology, dismissed by skeptics as perpetually five years away, is actually making measurable progress. A Dutch startup recently set new performance records, including successful high-speed lane switching at velocities pointing toward eventual speeds around 700 km per hour. That's not hypothetical, it's demonstrated in functional prototypes. In India, the government revived a freight-focused Hyperloop project linking two major ports. The strategic decision to prioritize cargo over passengers is pragmatic. Freight transport faces fewer regulatory hurdles, lower safety thresholds, and more tolerance for experimental systems. If freight hyperloop proves economically viable, passenger networks become significantly more feasible. The concept remains audacious, near vacuum tubes allowing pods to travel at aircraft speeds with dramatically lower energy consumption and zero weather delays.
Infrastructure costs remain massive and critics question whether the economic benefits justify the investment. But incremental progress, successful tests, government backing, private investment flowing in, suggests the technology might cross from experimental curiosity to operational infrastructure within the decade. And if it does, long distance travel gets redefined entirely, collapsing geographic distance and making cross-country trips as routine as urban commutes, wearable technology that disappears. Back to something that sounds impossible, electronics that vanish. Seoul National University researchers created fully biodegradable conductive fibers for wearables, these maintain genuine performance, 2,500 Siemens per meter conductivity, real stretchability, actual durability under stress. Yet within months of disposal in soil, they decompose naturally, no toxic residue, no landfill burden. Market projections show explosive growth, biodegradable electronics surging from $1.15 billion in 2025 to $12.88 billion by 2032, representing 35% annual growth. That trajectory indicates serious commercial momentum, not just academic research. Imagine health monitoring clothing that tracks vitals for weeks, then biodegrades harmlessly after its useful life. Medical sensors that dissolve naturally inside the body after completing their function, eliminating removal procedures, environmental monitors that can be deployed in wilderness areas without creating pollution. The entire paradigm of electronic waste could shift within a generation. Technology wouldn't leave permanent traces, it would integrate temporarily, perform its function, then disappear. This represents a fundamental rethinking of humanity's relationship with electronics, moving from persistent artifacts to ephemeral tools. Security built into physics itself. In Berlin, a telecommunications milestone barely registered in mainstream news. A major company achieved near-perfect transmission of entangled photons across 82 kilometers of fiber optic cable, while that same cable simultaneously carried regular internet traffic. This wasn't isolated laboratory work, it was integrated with existing infrastructure, proving quantum networks can coexist with current systems. Quantum internet research is accelerating from theory to deployment. Research teams are developing scalable network nodes using ions and light to extend quantum connections beyond controlled environments. The result is a communication system designed to be virtually unhackable, not through better software or encryption algorithms, but through fundamental physics. Quantum networks don't just protect data, they make interception detectable. Any attempt to observe quantum information changes that information, alerting both communicating parties immediately. It's security guaranteed by the laws governing reality itself. Once quantum networks scale beyond experimental deployment, digital espionage fundamentally changes. Secure communication stops being about building better locks. It becomes about physics making interception impossible without detection. Molecules designed by algorithms, Generative AI in 2025 expanded into domains that seemed safely reserved for human expertise. It's not just writing text or generating images anymore. AI systems are now composing original music, generating film sequences, and designing potential drug compounds with startling sophistication. Researchers recently introduced models capable of predicting chemical reactions with high physical accuracy, a capability that could accelerate material science and pharmaceutical development by orders of magnitude. Traditional drug discovery involves synthesizing thousands of compounds, testing each for desired properties, then iterating through failures. AI can simulate this process virtually, identifying promising candidates before any physical synthesis occurs. The time and cost savings are potentially revolutionary. In entertainment, production teams use AI to create visual sequences that previously required weeks of skilled human labor. Concept art, storyboard generation, preliminary animation, creative tasks that defined entire professions, are being augmented or replaced by algorithmic systems. Investment reflects this momentum. Global spending on generative AI rose nearly 19% in the past year, with adoption spreading across healthcare, media, and enterprise systems. The technology isn't just automating existing processes, it's enabling entirely new workflows that weren't possible when human labor was the bottleneck. Eyes that display the digital world. A Dubai-based startup called Inkspect secured $250 million for smart contact lenses that function as digital interfaces worn directly on the eye. These aren't distant concepts. They're designed for augmented reality overlays, night vision, optical zoom, and health monitoring through tear fluid analysis. The company plans business-focused versions by 2027, with consumer products following shortly after. 
Companies like Mojo Vision and research teams in South Korea have already tested prototypes displaying basic text or tracking glucose levels from tears. If successful, these lenses could replace bulky AR headsets and potentially rival smartphones as the primary interface for digital information. Imagine walking through an airport where gate changes and boarding information appear directly in vision, navigation arrows overlaying actual streets while walking unfamiliar cities, real-time translation subtitles appearing over foreign text, health alerts based on continuous biomarker monitoring, all without checking any external device. The entire digital world could rest on the surface of an eye. It's simultaneously groundbreaking and deeply unsettling exactly the kind of leap that makes distinguishing present from distant future nearly impossible. Defenses against computers that barely exist. The U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology finalized three post-quantum cryptography standards in 2025, then added a fourth, a code-based algorithm called HQC. These aren't theoretical proposals. Federal systems are already adopting these standards, rebuilding digital security infrastructure to withstand attacks from quantum computers that barely exist yet. Industry conferences throughout the year focused on refining these protocols, ensuring critical data remains protected when quantum computing matures. What makes this remarkable is the timeline. Engineers are fortifying defenses against threats that might not materialize for another decade, but the consequences of waiting would be catastrophic. Today's encrypted communications, financial transactions, government secrets, personal data could be harvested now and decrypted later once quantum machines become powerful enough. So the race isn't against current technology. It's against the inevitable future, and that future is being secured today, before the threat fully materializes. It's defensive warfare fought years before the weapons arrive. Machines that break mathematics. Quantum computing in 2025 crossed thresholds scientists chased for decades. Companies worldwide are investing billions into building fault-tolerant machines targeting the million qubit scale before 2030. Error correction, the nightmare plaguing quantum systems for years, just took major leaps forward. Scientists demonstrated practical distillation methods resolving problems first identified in the 1990s. Hardware is scaling at breathtaking speed. Superconducting and neutral atom systems in the United States and Japan surpassed 200 qubits, with 1,000 qubit prototypes on the near horizon. These advances represent a shift from theoretical promise to tangible progress. To understand the significance, Traditional computers process information sequentially, even when parallelized. Quantum computers process vast possibilities simultaneously through superposition and entanglement. Problems requiring conventional supercomputers millennia to solve could theoretically be cracked in hours. Drug discovery, material science, financial modeling, climate prediction, entire fields face imminent fundamental disruptions. The machines rewriting computation's rules aren't arriving someday. They're here growing exponentially more powerful each quarter, and their implications cascade across every domain touched by computing, which means essentially everything. So here's the reality check. 15 technologies that shouldn't exist yet are already operational, being deployed across industries, reshaping infrastructure and capabilities while most of humanity scrolls through social feeds completely unaware. The future isn't approaching at a comfortable, manageable pace. It's converging from multiple directions simultaneously, quantum systems, biological printers, synthetic media, ambient intelligence, biodegradable circuits, each breakthrough amplifying others, creating synergies nobody fully predicted. Previous technological revolutions transformed society sequentially. Electricity, then automobiles, then computers, each wave given time to integrate before the next arrived. But quantum computing, bioprinting, generative AI, and ubiquitous connectivity are maturing concurrently. Humanity isn't experiencing linear progress anymore. It's navigating exponential transformation across multiple domains at once without roadmaps or historical precedent. These technologies promise solutions to problems that plagued civilization for millennia, disease, scarcity, distance, insecurity. But they also generate questions without clear answers about privacy, identity, autonomy, and what being human means when biology and technology merge seamlessly. The world of 2040 that futurists described, it's not coming. It arrived early, quietly, while everyone was distracted. The gap between what people think is possible and what actually exists has never been wider. And that gap is about to close suddenly, dramatically, and irreversibly. Because these 15 breakthroughs aren't endpoints. They're foundations for what comes next. And what comes next will make today's impossibilities look quaint.